comes from Emmanuel's veins The sinner was plunged beneath the flood and got saved Since then I walk in forgiveness All of my guilt was erased The chains of the past Broken at last, I got saved. Oh, I got saved. I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus. I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord. I'm restored and made right. He got a hold of my life. I've got Jesus. How could I walk? and tasted your grace I was so lost till I fell at the cross and got saved oh I got saved I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the
verse 4 says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth a joyous song and sing praises. And that's what we've come here to do, to lift up the name that is above every name. Can you help us out? Sing every praise.
happened. Jesus rose from the dead. He defeated sin and death forever. It happened. The stone was rolled away. Jesus walked out of the tomb and he lives forever. And now that Easter's over, it's our turn. We have been born again into a new life. We are dead to sin, but alive to God. No longer slaves to this world, but set free to pursue God's righteousness and embrace the gift of eternal life. We have been bought with a high price through Christ's redeeming blood. We have been made temples of God's spirit, free from condemnation and reconciled to the Father. Though we may struggle here on earth, we press forward to our eternal homeland, walking in faith and with confident hope that the one who began this good work will bring it to completion. Jesus rose and the gates of heaven opened, and that victory alone means that nothing can separate us from God's love. This is why we hope. This is why we worship. This is why we give. This is why we go, pray, baptize, teach, and preach. And we'll never have to do this alone, for Jesus will be with us always until the very end. Easter may be over, but for us, it's also just begun. Can you stand up and give the Lord a hand this morning? It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. We've still got people coming in, and I just believe that the Holy Spirit is already here this morning. How many is ready to feel the power of Jesus? How many is ready to worship this morning? Come on, church. How many is ready to worship?
and stand up on his faithfulness, church. He will not fail you. I don't know what you've gone through this week. Um, maybe it's been a great week. Maybe it's been the hardest week of your life. But you know what? He promised that he would be with us forever and ever. Amen. He is the same God today as he has always been. Do you believe that? He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. And I change not. Aren't you thankful for that this morning? Hallelujah. We just worship you. Do you realize that today you and I have the privilege of serving the same God that all of the saints of the Old Testament had the opportunity? David, Abraham, all of them, Paul, Silas, when they were in that prison and they saw God come through, that's the same God that you serve today, church. Hallelujah. And we're going to have call on him. We have that privilege today. Hallelujah. Oh, God. 
the Lord speaking to my spirit into my heart this morning and to encourage you there will be some out here that know this because it's confirmation of what the Lord wants you to hear don't quit praying don't quit trusting because the Lord would want you to know that what you've been going through in the valley he is the God of the valley too. What you've been praying for and what you've been trusting for, your breakthrough is a right around the corner. The Lord would say, don't give up now. Just keep praising me. He said, just keep praying because your breakthrough is on the way. Can somebody thank God that your breakthrough is coming in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Why don't we just walk around and shake one another's hands and say, do you feel the power and the presence of God?
face and as long as I have breath, yes, Jesus, I God. will praise the Lord. Amen. You can uh, find yourself back to your seats. God is in this place. Amen. So Chris, Sister Christina has an, uh, me to do this announcement this morning. It's concerning the Comfort Care Women's Health. It is the Stride for Life <clears throat> that is on May the 4th. This helps keep uh, raise funds and for the free services to the women and men that are faced with any unplanned pregnancies. If you did not receive a fundraising form last week, there are more available on the display table in the front foyer. Please consider walking to support this vital life-saving ministry. There's a donation box in the back of the church if you choose to help in that way. Or please fill out a baby bottle and there are a few left there on the display table. She says she will be bringing more of those in. And Sister Christina is the coach for our church, representative of that great ministry. Aren't you thankful for Sister Christina? Amen. So please see her uh, after service. And uh, if you have any questions concerning this great ministry, uh, and we would ask that if you will, please join her team uh, for Stride for the Life. And she says a big thank you in advance for doing that. Amen. How many are thankful that we are having our Wednesday night Bible studies? Come on, get excited, right? We had a really great turnout. I believe there was close to around 20 people showed up last Wednesday, and we're expecting more to keep growing in that ministry. Uh, we are studying in, in living like Christ. How many knows that we are supposed to be Christ-like, right? And we are also called and commanded, he said when he left, to be with the Father, to be his witnesses. So this is our Bible study, living like Christ and being his witnesses. So please come out, bring a friend, invite somebody who may not want to come to a worship service, but maybe they'll want to come for a Bible study. Amen? Uh, so we also would ask you to keep in mind that on April the 28th, we are going to be having our friends and our family day. Uh, that will be uh, a day that we will be celebrating again the goodness of our God. And we ask that you would invite all of your friends and your family members. Invite anyone that you can reach out to and bring them to this great time that we're going to have in fellowship. After the service, we will also be having uh, food, and we ask that you would bring a covered dish that day as we celebrate with our family and friends and celebrating our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Sister Amanda, Pastor Amanda, wants me to say that on May the 5th, uh, right after, say after the service, it will be the Reducing the Risk class. And that is a very important class. If you are working with the youth or you plan on working with the youth or even around the youth, it is mandatory that you take this class. It is all about keeping our youth safe. Amen? And so we pray that you would, uh, if you've not been in this class, please make uh, plans to attend that uh, right after the service. I just want to say again, uh, my heart and your part has probably been heavy a little bit. We um, are living church in perilous times. I believe that we are living in the days that Jesus said there would be many sorrows that we will be facing in this world and we need to join together in prayer for the nation of Israel. We need to be praying for God's chosen nation. And we need to be praying that our government, 
our president will have wisdom and leadership and he will always know how important it is to be an ally with Israel and to always support and protect Israel at all costs. We do know there is an imminent uh, threat of an attack up on Israel by Iran. This is biblical prophecy. As you and I as believers, we should get excited because we know that all of these prophecies are leading up to the glorious return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I told my wife this morning on the way over here, I said there's going to come a time when Israel is going to be surrounded by all of her enemies. But Jesus said, when that happens, lift up your head for your redemption is about ready to draw nigh. How many are excited about that? So let's pray for our uh, Israel. Let's pray for America. And let's pray for revival. God's greater than any evil that is participants in our world today. He is greater and He will prevail. I'm going to ask Pastor if he'll come at this time. Hallelujah. Let's give our uh, assistant pastor a hand. Amen. Praise the, praise the Lord. I just want to... I want to piggy off uh, the back of what Pastor uh, Steve had just said about. I'm going to be doing a, before Pastor John comes, I'm going to be doing a three part series on running the race. Look at your neighbor and say, running the race. Look at the other one, the better look at one, and say, running the race. A a amen. Do you know we get slack at times in our Christian walk with the Lord? And we allow distractions in our life to come. Uh, and the devil makes sure that happens, doesn't he? And so uh, I just want to share with you before Pastor John comes that I felt like when I was praying the other day that the Lord revealed to me that I'm handing you the baton. How many of you in school, how many of you in school ran track? A couple of you, okay. And, and you had like the 800-yard dash and the, the, the relay race and the 600-liter uh, race. And then at the very last one, you get to put, you know, in all four of them, but you get that the baton and you would run as hard as you can run. And I believe the Lord showed me, just as Pastor Steve was saying, that I believe we're living in perilous times. I believe we're living in the last days and I believe the Lord has handed the baton off to us to run as hard as you can run because the rapture of the church is about to take place and I believe we got to give it all we got to give to win the loss, to win our families, to win our kids and our grandkids to the uh, to the Lord. So I wanted to share that with you this morning. I'm going to be doing a three-part series on running the, the race because God's getting us ready for the end time. Amen? And He's getting us ready to win a harvest field. we got a lot of people just around this church that need the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got a lot of people in our family that need the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we need to be running the race as hard as we can uh, be running. Just uh, I want to remind you, in the back is our offering plate. Just remember to bring your tithes and offerings. I want to thank everyone for your giving uh, this morning. And we also have had a few questions about our heat and air uh, system. I met with the gentleman again Monday, and the electrician also came Monday. So we're winding, getting ready for a day uh, to start this project. I'll need as many men on board when we get ready to tear the unit out outside. And upstairs, uh, uh, Brother Fred is going to be handling and working with that. But we're going to be putting a new heating and air system in probably starting in the next four or five weeks. So let's give the Lord a hand for that. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many of you appreciate our youth pastor, Pastor John? Let's stand. Let's stand and give him a hand and let him know how much we appreciate him this morning as he comes and brings the Word of God to us. I'm not sure why he hyped you all up, but uh, you all may be seated. It's an honor uh, to be under Pastor Steve and uh, Pastor Kevin to be able to do this. Um, next Sunday, it was supposed to have been Youth Sunday, but we had a death in our family. So please pray for my mom and my dad. Uh, my uncle passed away. He not, 
I not only lost an uncle, but he lost a brother. So can you just lift him up in prayer uh, this morning as we go through this week, as we travel out, um, out of town to, uh, to, to mourn the death of him? Um, I want to talk a little about this morning. Well, I'm going to piggyback what all Pastor Kevin said, running. Running the race. You know, if you, if you run and you, and you stop, you kind of like, you're almost stuck, right? You're kind of stuck in the position, you know, if you run, you know, and you, and, and you stop and you, and you just stop. You know, you're not getting any progress. You're not going anywhere. Uh, uh, I think that's confirmation of what, uh, of, of what God wanted me to speak about this morning. We're going to dive right into the text. Uh, Matthew 20. Verses 29 through 34, as Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was coming, I mean, was going by, they shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted, all the louder. Let's say it together. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you? Asked the Lord. They answered, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately, they received their sight and followed him. The title of my sermon is, I ain't stuck unless I stop. It should be, I'm not stuck, but I like to, I ain't stuck unless I stop. Right? These two men, they had an amazing change in their lives, right? But can you imagine if they just, they just stopped and just gave up and just stopped calling out for Jesus and just gave up. Would they have still been stuck? Would they have still been blind? Let's say it together. I ain't stuck unless I stop. They received their sight and they followed Him. How many of you believe that God can still change your life? I know we can change mine. Uh, 15, 16 years ago, took me out of a drug addiction, saved me from a 20 year prison life. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. He can change your life at any age and at any stage, right? You don't have to be too old to, to, to have a life changing experience. You can't be too young to have a life changing experience. But when you feel the stuckest, that's when God does his best. When you feel the stuckest, that's when God can be able to come in there and say, I know you're stuck. You can't do anything. Let me come in. But you got to shout out to me. You can't stop. You got to keep believing. You got to keep pressing. You got to keep stepping. You can't stop. How many of you all know these, these big Jeep people, right? And the Jeep people with the, with the big jacked up tires and the millions of ducks they got on their on their uh, 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 um, their uh, dashboard and the big old winches in front of them, or even maybe a big truck that's got the big old winches in front of them. They live for the moment to get the opportunity to pull someone out, right? They live for that moment for someone who is stuck. Yes, I finally get to use this. I finally be able to get to utilize this Jeep, this truck. But I've got a God who has a big Jeep or a big truck, and he lives for the moment when somebody is stuck so he can show what he's got. Right? He lives for that moment. But that word stuck is kind of nice to you sometimes, right? But that word stuck can also be used as depression. You're depressed, you're stuck. Anxiety has got the best of you. Got you stuck, don't want to feel like doing anything. Stuff you used to enjoy, you don't enjoy no more. What about fear? Fear can leave you stuck if you think you're just going to just fail the whole time. It can leave you stuck. These two men had a physical problem. They were 
blind. The disciples who followed Jesus were also blind, but not because they couldn't use their eyes, but because they couldn't see what Jesus was doing. See, the Bible says there were two men sitting by the roadside, probably begging, right, Pastor Steve? Because Passover was happening. They were sitting there begging. Jesus was going, was not going to see the lamb, but to be the lamb. See, he was, he was one week away from hanging on the cross. He was a little over a week away from, from rising from the dead. He's headed towards Jerusalem to face the cheers of the crowd riding on a donkey. They, they laid their palm branches down shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. But days later, many in that same crowd that shouted Hosanna will also be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. I'm here to tell you younger folks or even maybe everybody under the sound of my voice, don't ever commit your view of yourself to a crowd. Don't ever do that. If they like you, wonderful, that's great. If they don't like you, who cares? God loves you anyway. Right? And Jesus never committed his identity to a crowd and neither can you. We can't, I don't, I don't care what culture says about you. I don't care what culture says you got to do this to get fame. You got to post this to get this many likes. You got to follow this trend and that trend. See how it always changes? But Jesus never changes. I want to preach to the youth, don't become too much like your crowd and too little like your Christ. See, Jesus can help you stand out from the crowd and He can help you go the right way even if the whole crowd goes the wrong way. But I want to talk about the two blind men. See, when they shouted, He called them. And when He called them, he touched them. And when he touched them, they were healed. And when he healed them, they received their sight and followed him. That's the key here. When we get our breakthrough, when we get our miracle, we shouldn't just go back and just live any old way and then come back to him when stuff happens. No, we got to continue to follow him because troubles are still going to come up. But they were blind. Past tense. They were blind. But not anymore, right? I would suggest that God would be the author of your story. Not the crowd. Not culture. God would be the author of your story of life. And it would be, I would suggest that Him to hold the pen of your life. And I know that He turned it around for me and it doesn't matter what they called me anymore. It doesn't matter. I know he did some things, and there's an old hymn, um, and his amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. If you all know it, you can say it together. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Let's repeat this. I was blind. I was blind. But I'm not now. Now I see. Can we give God a praise? I was blind, but now I see. The whole crowd was telling them, stop shouting. Stop that. That's, that's ridiculous. Everybody say, stop that. <laughs> Everybody says, stop that. Stop shouting. That's ridiculous. The whole crowd told them to be quiet. This is pointless. Don't you know you're blind? Don't know the joke there. They're blind. Okay, never mind. <laughs> don't you know you're blind? They don't know. The... All right, never mind. Never mind. Maybe I was just a joke. I only, <laughs> I only get, I guess. But I love their boldness. But maybe their blindness, their blindness led to their boldness. 
See, the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Maybe if they, what if they had seen how big the crowd was around Jesus? Do you think they would have had the faith enough to say anything about their condition? I mean, there was a pile of people there. If they had seen that crowd, do you think they would have had the faith to shout out, Lord, have mercy on us? When Jesus asked the men, what do you want? They didn't pray about the needs of others. They asked for something that they needed. And Jesus, he didn't turn them away as selfish. Can we thank God for that? I know we can pray for the people. When we pray for needs of ours, he doesn't turn us away as being selfish. There may be some of you in here that the crowd is telling you to keep it down. Just keep it down. Don't even bother. Why even bother? You're going to screw up anyway. Why even bother? Or don't even, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. You're going to struggle with it again. So why even, why even try? But not all crowds are on the outside. Some of the crowds that tell us to keep it down are the crowds that keep, that you keep inside from the voices of fear, failure, disappointment, depression. I can keep going. Anxiety. People make the statement, not sure if you've heard it, I'm just finding myself. I'm finding myself. If I'm finding myself, that means I'm what? I'm lost. If I'm lost, I need a what? I need a guide. But the only way that I'm going to find me is if I find, if I look for Jesus. That's the only way that I can find me is if I follow Jesus. Not the crowd. If I follow Jesus. Not what's trending if I follow Jesus. Because the only person who really knows me is Jesus. The only person who knows what my life is supposed to be is the manufacturer or what the Bible says is the gardener who planted the potential in me to begin with. For some of you, it might be the constant voice that might say, you missed it. You blew it. You screwed up. You missed it. You blew it. Try something else. Or it's over. It's over. Just, 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 just stop. It's over. You tried a million times. You kept failing. Just stop. It's the voice of the crowd telling you, stop it. Just stop. Why even bother? Even being at church today might be a struggle for some of you. You might want to hear, yes, you might want to hear God's voice today, but there's another voice inside telling you, you really need to stop going to church. You got so much other stuff that you can be doing. You can watch online. You don't need to be here with everybody else. It's not changing your life anyway. You're still screwing up. It's not, why, why still come? It's not changing your life anyway. You're still screwing it up. You're still bombing it. Why do you keep serving God? Why do you keep trying to be the person of integrity? Don't you know the good guys finish last? Why are you even trying when all you do is fail? That voice is saying, just stop. Just stop. It would be a whole lot easier if you would just stop and do what everybody else is doing that's making them happy. Everybody else saying, well, I'm human, I mess up, so it doesn't matter. Just stop trying. Or everybody else has given up on you. The voice of the crowd on the inside is louder than the voice of the crowd on the outside. 
Thing is, there's no noise cancellation for the voice of the crowd on the outside. Speaking of noise cancellation, I got a, 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 a pair of headphones a couple weeks ago. I didn't know there were noise cancellations. So I uh, put one in as I was driving through the, out of the parking lot. I put one in. I said, man, these are nice. You know, and I put the other one in, not knowing there were noise cancellations. And I freaked out for a second because I thought my truck cut off because I, I heard absolutely nothing. Heard absolutely, I can't really hear you. I may be talking louder. But maybe, maybe I should change that. There's no noise cancellation. But if we're digging in God's word and we're ignoring everything, we can, we can hear the voice a little bit, but it's not overtaking us. It's not overtaking our mind. Maybe we put our spiritual noise cancellation headphones on by reading our Bible, by praying, by listening to other Christian friends, other mentors that are speaking life into you, speaking positive things on you, telling you, you got to stop doing that. Not tickling your ears. So maybe, maybe there is some noise cancellation for the voice on the outside. But it's not going to stop. And if we're not running after God, that noise cancellation is not going to work. There's a transparency mode in here, too. I can still hear it, but it's not as loud. So we can, we can try to do life, but it, 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 it's still there. We can't read our Bible just one time and put it down. It, it's still there. The voices aren't going anywhere from the outside. They're still there. While the voice of God is calling you into some things and calling you out of some things, there may be another voice telling you to just stop. Everybody say, I ain't stuck unless I stop. When I was younger, I used to ride four-wheelers in a thing called a pit. This nasty muck stuff, and it was some oh, stinking stuff. And you stepped in it, you could sink up to your to your knee really quick, and it's like and 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 you couldn't get out of it. So we were, we'd ride our four-wheelers through it, you know, like a dummy, and get covered in this marsh mud. But we couldn't ride over that spot fast because we'll sink. And, and if we stop, we're definitely going to sink. So we have to keep up and just ride fast and get mud everywhere. But we didn't get stuck because we didn't stop. We didn't get stuck because we didn't Stop. Sometimes we got stuck, yes. Sometimes we get stuck in life. But don't stop. We had somebody to pull us out. You, you get a hold of a friend. If you feel like you're stuck, talk to them confidentially. Help them pull you out of that rut. See, they shouted and the crowd said, stop, right? They shouted, Lord, have mercy on us. Everyone say they shouted. Let's shout it out now. They shouted. Young people, don't ever let what you don't have keep you from what you do have. Don't have, I'm sorry, let me say that again. Young, don't ever let what you don't have keep you from using what you do have. Remember, they couldn't see, but you don't have to see to what? To shout, right? Say, Lord, have mercy on us. You don't have to see the shout. Not only did they shout, but Jesus called and they came, right? You don't have to see the step. It's harder, yes, but you can still do it. I'm here to talk to some people who feel like they are stuck. The issue isn't that you're stuck, but the issue is that you just stop. The issue isn't that God's done with you. He's far from it, right, Pastor Steve? He's far from it. The issue is that you have allowed what you don't have, your sight, to keep you from using what you do have. Your shout and your steps. We can shout, and we can step. 
even if I shout and stumble and say, and shout and stumble, come on, and shout and stumble or say that I've been forgiven and stumble in sin and said, oh, Lord, help me. Please forgive me and stumble in sin and say that I'm forgiven and stumble in sin. Guess what? A stumble is still a step. A stumble is still a step and a shout is still a shout. Even if I close my eyes, I can't see, but I can still shout. Maybe you're in a season of life where there are some things that you can't clearly see. I don't know what God wants me to do next. I don't know what's, I don't, I don't know how God's going to make a way on me. I'm stuck. I don't know how I'm going to bounce back from this. Man, I screwed up. But the fact that you and I can't see it should not stop us from shouting. It takes faith. We've got to shout and in faith that God's going to take me out of this situation. God's going to heal my body. God's going to break this chain. Tag someone or tell someone you ain't stuck, you've just stopped. Tell someone you ain't stuck, you've just stopped. But look, you've stopped. You stopped being positive because you don't see any evidence. Or maybe you stop believing that you can rise above it. Believing that this thing is way bigger than you. Yes, it may be bigger than you, but it's not bigger than God. You stop believing that it can really be true for you, even though God spoke. You just stop believing because you didn't believe in yourself. The blind men heard that Jesus was coming and they shouted. The Bible said that Jesus did it for the blind men and he did it instantly and with compassion. He touched them. Hear me out. He didn't need to shout anymore because God doesn't have to shout. He doesn't have to shout when he's close. That's why when when God does something for you, you stay close to Him. You continue. When you when you finally get that breakthrough, don't step away. You stay close so you don't have to shout. So if you can't hear Him right now, if you can't fear Him, I mean, feel Him right now, if you can't see Him right now, But maybe you'll hear that still, small voice and feel a touch. All of a sudden, what the crowd told them had no power over the Savior who touched them. The crowd had no power over the Savior, over the one who had touched them. When God touches you, He says, I don't care what they've told you. He says, I don't care what they've called you. He says, I don't care how they have labeled you. He didn't come to them. He called them. When He found them, they were sitting. When the crowd told them to stop, I love this. When the crowd told them to stop, they shouted louder. When the crowd is telling you to stop, why even keep going to church? You just cry out louder. You just keep pressing towards God louder. You're almost on the brink of breakthrough. You may be, you may be right there. But because they didn't stop, Jesus did. Because they didn't stop shouting, Jesus did. They could have just sat there and been quiet and listened to the crowd. You know what? You're right. There's a lot of people here. Why would he stop to us begging? We're blind. Why would he, you know what? Just forget it. But they didn't. They kept shouting and Jesus stopped. But there's always a but, isn't it? But 
This isn't the first shout in Jericho, is it? Any of y'all remember another shout in Jericho? Yes, remember no, remember so. I'm glad you asked. Glad you asked me. Joshua 6 says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. As the worship team comes, no one went out and no one came in. They were stuck. Right? Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Wow. Once. All I got to do is one time. All I got to do is read my Bible one time and I get a breakthrough. <laughs> That's easy. All I got to do is pray one time and I get a breakthrough. That's easy. No. No. The Bible said do this for six days. Every day they marched and nothing happened. Who here is every day you're praying and nothing's happening? Who is here right now? Every day you're praying for either for yourself, for a situation, for a loved one, and you don't see anything happen. They marched around Jericho. Six days, nothing happened. It took faith. Five little words. It's a big thing to do. It took faith. So you're praying every day and nothing's happening. You're, you're, you're waiting for the walls to fall. You're waiting for the pain to go away. It took six days of stuck. And hear me out. This Today might be your seventh day. Who never knows? You never know. Last week you could have thought that was your seventh day. But today, this week, this hour, tonight, this could be your seventh day. So don't stop shouting. Don't stop believing. Don't stop chasing after God. It said... When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Not, yay! Give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up and everyone straight in. Maybe that shout isn't a shout from your voice. Maybe that shout is you're digging deeper into God's Word. Maybe you're sucking carpet, as it would say in Team Challenge. You're constantly crying out to God. Maybe that breakthrough might happen in the grocery store. You never know. But i got a question to ask you. If you're wanting a breakthrough, or if you're wanting healing in your body. What's the Jericho that's holding you back? We need to shout out fear, anxiety, depression, addiction. I mean, we can keep going. There's a lot of people in here that deal with a lot of stuff. Healing in their body. Maybe why don't we believe that today can be your seventh day. And the men shouted. They weren't ashamed of it. They weren't ashamed of who was around them. Even though they couldn't see, I'm sure they could still hear the people. They weren't ashamed. So if if you want to break through, the altar this morning is open. Don't stop. Don't stop. The altar is what's holding you back. If it's fear of somebody looking at you because you came up here and this is the seventh son that you done came up here. Who cares? Who cares? So 
So as they're playing, I want to just open the altar up. Today can be your seventh day. Today can be your breakthrough. Today can be your breakthrough of healing. If you're praying for a loved one, they, he can come to them right where they're at. So I want to invite you to come to the altar. I want to encourage you. I'm sure somebody in here is struggling, not just me. still give you a breakthrough. I feel refreshed this morning. I mean, it was it was awesome. Just keep fighting. Keep pressing. Don't stop. If you feel stuck, get somebody to help you out of that muck. Can we give God a, a praise this morning for what He's done? Today can be someone's seventh day. This can be their healing. This can be their breakthrough. If it's not, don't stop coming. Come back next Sunday. It can be a breakthrough then. Thank you. You all have a great day.